Hi guys, welcome to the control of the heart rate. So in terms of the specification, uh, we will be looking at the wave of electrical uh, activity and the role of the SAN, AVN and the bundle of heats. So also you need to be aware of the uh, chemoreceptors and pressure receptors uh, in terms of the location and the function of those. And we will be looking at the two types of the, uh, sorry, we will be looking at the two substitutions of the uh, autonomic nervous system that will affect and control the heart rate. So uh, here, a really important skill, you need to be able to work out the cardiac output, which is the heart rate multiplied by the volume. So really easy um, tip from me. Dance of the heart rate, what they, uh, what you need to use, it's 60 over the length of one cycle. Okay, and in terms of the volume, they could give it to you in the table, they could give it to you on the graph. So if you get a graph, okay, let's say this will be like the heart rate, okay. So this is your the highest volume which you will read of the graph, which is for example here 20. This is the lowest, let's say it's 40. So the um, so the stroke volume it's the highest volume from the table or from the uh, graph minus the lowest. So in this situation we do 120 minus 40. Okay, so that's a really easy way of uh, remembering how to work out the cardiac output. So, autonomic uh, nervous system, we first will look at this. It's divided then into two. So, we've got sympathetic and parasympathetic. So, sympathetic speeds up. So, it's easy to remember on the alphabet S. As sympathetic speeds up the activity and parasympathetic slows it down. So sympathetic stimulates the effector, but parasympathetic will inhibit the effector, hence slow down in any activity. So a sympathetic will help to cope with stressful situations and parasympathetic will control activities on the normal resting conditions. So sympathetic then acts as a emergency controller while the parasympathetic will conserve energy and replay, uh, replenishing the body's reserves. So let's get started with the control of the heart rate. So hopefully you all remember the structure of the heart. Okay, so we've got the right side of the heart, the left side of the heart. So we've got the atrium, we've got ventricle. In between H and ventricle, you've got AV valves, <coughs> and from the uh, uh, blood vessels, we will have semilunar valves. Okay, so quick recap the uh, blood enters uh, the heart through vena cava. This is deoxygenated blood. Uh, when the ventricle contracts, the AV valve will open due to higher pressure before the valve. So uh, the blood will flow through the AV valve to the right uh, ventricle. The pressure inside of the right ventricle is going to increase, the volume will decrease. So the pulmonary artery is going now to be involved because the blood will be pumped through the semilunar valves now to the pulmonary artery to go to the lungs. Now oxygenated blood goes back to the heart through the pulmonary vein. Uh, the uh, left uh, atrium is going to fill in with the blood, so the volume is going to, uh, to uh, not volume, sorry, the pressure is going to increase, so the valve, AV valve, is going to open. The blood fills the left ventricle and will be pumped away through the aorta to the rest of the body when the ventricle contracts. So this is the one-way flow of the blood. And now let's have a look how this is controlled. So um, the wave of the electrical excitation will spread from the SAN. Okay, so let's get rid of this. Okay, so 
sinoatrial node it's the node that you can find uh, here okay at the right atrium so the wave of electrical uh, excitation will spread from here across the right atrium and the left atrium so they both will contract and uh, the, 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 the the whole sequence of the uh, control of the heart rate it's obviously located in the medulla oblongata in terms of the part of the brain. So once uh, the uh, H here left and right contract, this um, this wave then will be passed to the uh, H ventricular septum. So this is a layer of non-conductive tissue, so that will prevent the wave crossing to the left uh, and right ventricle where instead it's going to enter it's going to enter uh, it's going to enter uh, the uh, the fibers which go through the septum so uh, av av and then uh, after a short delay because obviously we know that once the uh, hr contract the blood has to be pumped to the ventricle so there has to be a little short wave until the wave goes down to the base of the heart to the bottom for the ventricles to contract so the wave is going to be passed through the bundles of his so uh, this is going through the septum so uh, the, the wave will re be released from the porking tissues and the ventricles then can contract Okay, and remember the ventricles contract from the bottom of the heart. Okay, at the same time. So here we've got the question five marker. Describe how the heartbeat is initiated and coordinated. So using our notes, we're starting with SAN, which is located in the right atrium, which will send the electrical activity and causing both atrium to contract. Then we've seen that non-conducting tissue will prevent the contractions of the ventricles because uh, we're talking about here AVN, which delays the uh, impulses while the blood leaves the atrium, but still fills in the ventricles. So AVN will then send the wave of electrical activity down the bundle of his the contractions of the ventricles from the base up. Right? So describe how an impulse reaches the base of the ventricles from the heart, from the side, the actual not. And here we've got to order the events. So ready? Right, so it spreads through the atria from the right to the left atrium, okay, through the atrial ventricular node, then to the bundle of his. Right, so we can modify the uh, the uh, resting heart rate, and of course we did mention that the part of the brain that is uh, involved in this is medulla oblongata. So uh, we can increase or decrease the heart rate, which we've seen before, using the sympathetic or parasympathetic system. And the centers whether we have to increase or decrease a uh, heart rate will depend on the chemical and pressure changes in the blood. So in terms of the chemical changes, we will be looking at the pH, okay? Because if we've got lots of carbon dioxide in our blood, so there's lots of respiration going on, the pH is going to decrease. And this will be detected by the uh, carotid artery which we can uh, which we can find here okay so this is going to uh, identify the changes in the ph caused by increased uh, respiration because we've got lots of products so if that's the case we need to now speed up the uh, the heart rate to deliver more oxygen for respiring cells so uh, this is the event that shows you how this actually takes place in more detail. So you can pause the video now and you can have a look through it. Right. 
So next is the control by pressure receptor.